everybody. So today we're going to talk about Bluebird, which is a promised library um, for JavaScript. And we're going to go over a few functions that you might not be as familiar with, or if you are familiar with them, you might not be using them yet. And I want you to use them. So we're first going to talk about Permissify. Then we're going to talk about Permissify all, bind, all, spread, and join. And that is all the promises we're going to discuss today. So I promise we won't go over that. Um, so first of all, Permissify. Permissify is a really cool function that returns a new function that returns a promise um, instead of a callback. So that sounds more complicated than it actually is. So basically what it means is if you're dealing with a function that you need to give a callback to, you can instead create yourself a permissified version of it and use that. Um, and this is really great because it lets you avoid callback hell. So if you want to chain a bunch of them, you can just chain them using dot then and you don't need to constantly get deeper and deeper into callbacks. So the way you use it is you require Bluebird, and then you basically um, give it a function. So in this case, we're going to give it the read file function from the file system module. Um, and you can assign it to whatever name you want. And now you have this function available to you. So you can use it like you would any other promise. So you can dot then off of it, and you can catch at the end. So if you have a bunch of them, you don't need to handle the error for each individual one. An even cooler one is Permissify All, because Permissify All lets you do this, but with a whole entire library. Um, so for every function that exists in this library, let's say the file system, you're going to have whatever the name is, async. right? So instead of having some function, you're going to have some function async. So here, um, Permissifying all of the file system module, and then I can use read file async again. And this is really great. Because if you're using a library that doesn't have promises, but you are using promises in your code, which you should because it's easier, you don't have to manually every time permissify each promise or each function. Um, now, a lot of libraries do provide promises already built in. But if they don't, you should really consider this because you don't want to be writing a million callbacks and handling a million errors. Next is promise.bind. Now, this is really similar to the regular binds that we use in JavaScript. But it creates a promise that is bound to this. So um, the original promise, also each promise that will be um, derived from, the from that original promise will be bound to the same this. And this is really great because in promises, because you're dot then in and you're kind of losing context eventually, you're often going to find yourself, if you're trying to use the, this keyword, you're going to find yourself with a lot of undefined and like defaulting to the window and all sorts of stuff like that. Um, so in this case, let's say I want to make this little um, cat constructor. And I have their age and their color. And then I want to use it. So in my promise chain, for some reason, I want to read this file. And then later, I want to talk about this cat only after I read this file. So you can see the bind, uh, bind to this. This really small line is going to make my function work. So I'm going to just tell you, and you're going to trust me, that this is going to console log the cat is brown and is five years old. But if I remove that bind this after the promise that read file async, it will just say the cat is undefined and is undefined years old. So bind, I can um, use the this at any stage in my promise chain. And it will still be um, the same original cat that I was talking about. And promise.all is also a really cool method. If you're using a lot of promises, you can find yourself um, having a hard time with the async issue. So what this does basically it takes in an array of promises and starts executing at the same time and only resolves when all of them are fulfilled. So if you need a certain number of promises to return before you can move on, this is really, really great. And you can use it with dot spread, which basically lets you um, return all of these promises and then in order use them. So even if I don't know which promise will take longer to resolve, I can be sure that with spread, they'll be returned in the same order. So if I call find items first, then um, items will come back first. So I can use them, and I can call them items. And a really similar function is promise.join. It's really similar to promise.all, but instead of taking um, an array of promises, it takes just the promises themselves. So this is really good if you have um, a set number of promises, and you already know, not like an array that you keep pushing into, and you're not really sure how many you might end up with. 
but you have a set number of like two or three, I don't know, maybe five, whatever you want, um, a set number of promises, you can just put them in there. You don't need to put them in an array. And it's supposed to be more performant than that all, and it can just be more simple. So here I join all these promises, and again, they'll shoot up in the same time, and I pass here a callback function, which might seem a little weird with the promise library, but basically the last function can be whatever I want to do once all these return, but you can also use that spread if you want to use that on join. Um, and a little comparison of what it, they look like, promise that all, as you can see, I had to put them in an array, and promise that join, I invoke them inside of the, inside of the join function. And that is it for Bluebird, thank you.